forest bathing is a practice that has emerged in just in the last decade. And it started with research that was done in North Korea, Japan. And what we see is forest bathing as a practice is now happening in many nations in Asia, but it's also being taken up by other places around the world, such as Western Europe, the United States, and, and perhaps here in Mexico as well. What it's based on is years of research that has shown a range of health benefits, physical health, mental health, reduced diabetes symptoms, improved mood and attitude. And so there are countries that are now acting on that to create forest bathing policies. They're creating places, bases where people can go for forest bathing. They're also providing places in cities. They're recognizing the value of urban forest locations, parks, gardens, natural areas, and using those to provide therapy and healing services by way of forest bathing. So the physical and mental benefits of forest bathing are extensive. And this is borne out by research that has been done uh, primarily in Japan and North Korea, but now again we're seeing this in other parts of the world. But the studies are very good from a scientific standpoint. They are controlled trials. They uh, use randomized assignment of the participants in the study. And this is what makes these studies uh, very well respected within the medical community as well as the forestry community. What have these studies told us? They have shown that people have um, improved mental health, uh, there have been, to my knowledge, one or two neuroscience studies that have actually tracked how the brain responds when you're in a forest environment. Blood pressure is reduced. Heart rate is reduced. People are more relaxed and they take these experiences or from these encounters, they take these health effects beyond only that certain situation. It goes into their everyday lives. So some of the most recent work in forest bathing is about dosage. Sort of like when we're um, diagnosed with a disease and the doctor or the nurse tells us, well, we'll give you this medication. How much? How often? And so we're starting to look at forest bathing and consider dosage. How often do you have to have a forest bathing experience to continue those benefits throughout your life and through your everyday um, busyness? In the last few decades, there have been many studies of ecosystem services. The idea of ecosystem services is that there are intangible, there are benefits that we gain from our environment that are not readily sold on the market, like timber, for instance. But the ecosystem services that provide our clean air, our clean water, that prevent flooding, all of those sorts of services are now being more carefully studied and recognized. And they are so important. And so scientists and natural resource managers, environmental managers, now talk about co-benefits of ecosystems. Not just the single benefit, but the stacking of benefits and values from having healthy ecosystems. One of the most recently understood ecosystem services is, is human health. And at this Congress, this first national Congress, we are um, learning about and understanding the importance of mental health, the concerns about mental health in our communities. And so ecosystems offer benefits for mental health and physical health in people. Why is this important? Many of the health concerns that we have in our society and in our communities are not readily healed by uh, uh, drugs or pharmaceuticals. We need other solutions, and we're learning that environment can be one of those solutions. So what we need to do is to translate the research about health and environment to very practical programs to improve our environment and also to help people understand the benefits and through programs 
enter those environments, be a part of them and gain those benefits. Why is it important to understand health as an ecosystem service? And what does that mean for how we manage ecosystems? Health response is not a given without a healthy environment, healthy ecosystems. So it's really important there are policies and resources that make the best of the ecosystems that we have and also conserve them. So policies about urban growth, policies about green infrastructure within cities to promote more healthy environments within cities, and then policies to help engage other partners. So partners in public health, partners in our school systems, partners in the medical community, and even partners in the private sector because we're seeing that as part of the ecosystem services of health, workers work better, there's less burnout. So there's now the reason and the value of ecosystem services to engage partners who have never really worked in the environmental realm before. And so I think uh, health and environment and ecosystem is it's kind of opening up a new era of thinking about how we bring more people into green and involve more really important players and partners in making that green happen. Gobierno de México.